It's good to see the front row fill up first for a change. Okay, I think we're gonna get started. A day that we've been long awaiting for is finally here. And, uh, and I'm so pleased and privileged to be able to stand up here and kick this event off. Um, my name's Mike Felix. I'm the plant manager here at Lima. And it's with great honor that uh, I stand up here in front of you to represent the, both the UAW employees of the Lima engine plant and the salary team and all of our engineering support and our suppliers that have helped make this day possible. Um, this is a proud day for us, not only as a plant, but for the community of Lima as well, because we've got a long history of building engines in this plant. And it's hard to believe that just a short two years ago, this was a dark, abandoned area of the plant. We had equipment here that hadn't produced engines in years. And now we have transformed over 700,000 square foot of floor space with the latest technology in machining components and assembling engines. And we are poised to start the next chapter of our plant. Currently today, we build engines that go in the Ford Flex, the Edge, the Ford Explorer, and also in Lincoln products, the MKT, the MKZ, and the MKX. And we've reached a milestone this year with our current engine. Just earlier this month, we produced our three millionth engine off the current line. Later this year, we will produce our 40 millionth engine as a plant since the plant was started in 1958. So this is something we're all very proud of and it couldn't be possible without the cooperation and the support from all the employees, both present and past, and the UAW leadership, present and past, that has helped make this possible. So today, we're about to talk about the next chapter and a new engine that we're gonna to add to our lineup. It's gonna go into this vehicle right here. So with that, I'd like to introduce the president of the Americas for Ford Motor Company, Joe Hendricks. All right, good morning, everyone. It's always great to be back here in Ohio. Before we begin, um, let me welcome a member, a large, I'm sorry, a large number of guests we have today. From the Ford Motor Company, we have the Vice President of North American Manufacturing, Bruce Heddle. Bruce, where are you? Bruce? And of course, all of the Lima Engine Plant Management team, including Mike, thanks for, for hosting us today. We have a number of our UAW partners here today. I'd like to recognize several of them. Of course, many of you saw, we have Jimmy Settles, Vice President of the National Ford Department here. Welcome, Jimmy. For the second time in a month, we're together with Ken. Ken Lortz, Regional Director of UAW Region 2B. Ken, welcome. And of course, your local leadership here, Scott Henkel, Chairman, UAW 1219. Scott, there we are. And Dave Rave, pre President of UAW Local 1219. So congratulations, thank you. We also have a number of our key government officials with us today, and we couldn't do this without a partnership with the government at all levels of of the organization. And first, we have Jobs Ohio President and Chief Investment Officer John Miner. John, welcome, thank you. Somebody you should all know and been a very strong advocate of the auto industry. We have Congressman Jim Jordan, who represents Ohio's fourth district. Where's Jim? There you are. Where's Congressman? I saw him. I saw you. Where'd you go? Um, we also have Ohio Senate President Keith Faber, also Ohio Speaker Pro Tem Matt Huffman. And, of course, your mayor of Lima, Ohio, David Berger. <laughs> Allen County Commissioner Jay Begg. Jay, I saw you earlier. There you are. Thank you. And Bath Township Trustee Ron Miller. Ron, thank you for joining us. And we do have representatives from U.S. Senators Brown and Portman's offices. And, you know, we've appreciated the Senator's bipartisan advocacy for currency rules and trade agreements, some things that are near and dear to a number of, of us here today. The ongoing support of our senators and congressmen and women gives us the competitiveness we need in America to be able to make announcements like this today, of course, in Ohio and across the world. And of course, we want to thank our media friends for joining us here today as well. And last, but certainly not least, our great employees of the Lime Engine Plan. Thank you for joining us today. Some of you may know, I, uh, I was born in Columbus, but I grew up in Fostoria, Ohio, not that far away. 
went to Fostoria St. Wendelin, used to play Lima Central Catholic often in sports and football and basketball and other sports. So this uh, area of the country is certainly near and dear to my heart. I spent all of my school years in Fostoria. And I went to the University of Dayton uh, for undergrad. Congratulations, Dayton Flyers. I know it was tough when they played Ohio State. We had to, but we, you know, now we're rooting for Dayton to, tomorrow against Florida. All right, so just a few weeks ago, we were up the road in Avon Lake outside Cleveland to announce some other great news about our medium duty truck production coming back from Mexico into Ohio, creating new jobs and investments in Ohio as well. And it's really great to be here twice in a, just a month to announce more big news, as Mike said, building on the positive momentum we have at Ford Motor Company around the world. At Ford, as many of you know, we're in the midst of a, the most aggressive new product rollout that makes us the industry leader in developing new products for our customers. With more all new and refreshed models than any of our competitors, we now have the freshest vehicle lineup in the world. And that's very important to all of us because our success starts and ends with great products that our customers love. In 2014, we're stepping up product growth by introducing the most vehicles in a single year in our 111 year history. We're launching 23 new products around the globe 16 new products right here in North America, most we've ever launched. Every one of these products will be critical to our one Ford plan as we provide our customers with a full family of vehicles delivering the best in quality, fuel efficiency, safety, smart design, and of course, value. As we expand our product portfolio, we continue our relentless focus on advanced technologies that deliver green, safe, and smart solutions in our cars, utilities, and trucks. EcoBoost is a prime example of Ford touching millions with innovative technology that makes an impact. In the four years since we launched EcoBoost engines, we've sold more than two million EcoBoost-powered vehicles, and EcoBoost is now the most recognized fuel-efficient engine among consumers. We sell 100,000 EcoBoost vehicles every month around the world, equating to roughly one out of every five vehicles sold in Ford Motor Company. EcoBoost has also been a resounding hit with truck buyers. V8-like power, best-in-class towing, and outstanding fuel economy have enabled us to sell more than 450,000 F-Series trucks equipped with an EcoBoost since 2011. And that's accounted for approximately 46% of all F-150 sales in 2014. So, as we move forward, we'll continue building momentum around multiple product launches and expansions of smart technologies like EcoBoost that serve our customers and accelerate our sales growth. I think it's safe to say it will be an exciting year for all of us here in the Americas, and there's no more important launch this year for, more, for, for Ford Motor Company and our customers than the all-new 2015 F-150, the future of tough. And at Ford, we are hands down the top truck brand for trucks. We sell an F-Series truck every 42 seconds. And in 2013 alone, we sold more than 760,000 new F-Series trucks, the most since 2006. The F-Series is not only the best-selling truck in America 37 years running, but it's also the best-selling vehicle in the United States, period, for 32 straight years. What do you think about that? Now, you don't keep these incredible records alive unless you listen to your customers, constantly improve, change the game, and live trucks like we do at Ford. That's what the introduction of the all-new F-150 is all about. It embodies our pride in never standing still. 
and doing the really hard work it takes to remain the dominant truck leader for many years to come. The 2000 F-150 is our most capable truck ever, groundbreaking in every way and setting the new standard for the future of trucks. Both tough and smart. The new F-150 uses advanced materials, innovative technologies, and smart design to save weight, improve performance, and capability. At the same time, boost gas mileage. The new truck will be about 700 pounds lighter, improving performance in towing, hauling, acceleration, stopping, and overall fuel efficiency. We also raised the bar on what it means to be built Ford tough. This truck underwent more than 10 million miles of torture testing to ensure it would exceed our customers' expectations in the real world. And topping the list for many customers on the truck side of the business is capability. And that starts with power, something every driver can appreciate. And at the heart of this incredible new truck is, of course, the engine. And the new F-150 cust gives customers the choice of four different engines, including a completely new EcoBoost offering designed and engineered specifically for the new F-150 launch later this year. And you know that's why we're here today. It's my distinct pleasure and honor to officially announce the all-new 2.7-liter EcoBoost V6 with auto start-stop for the next generation Ford F-150 were built right here in Lima, Ohio at the Lima Engine Plant. Congratulations. Now we're proud to announce that Ford will invest $500 million and add 300 new jobs here to ramp up production of the new engine in support of this great F-150 launch. The engine gives F-Series customers a new EcoBoost V6 option that delivers the same power as some mid-range V8s in a smaller, smarter package with better fuel economy. All boosted by the debut of standard auto start-stop optimized for trucks. Now, auto stop-start for F-150, a feature especially tuned for truck customers, shuts off the engine when the vehicle is stopped to save fuel except when towing or in four-wheel drive mode to make sure performance is optimized. Now, if this truck filled with advanced technologies and battle-tested for capability in the extreme conditions of the Baja 1000 truck race, this engine is one of the most technically advanced and efficient six cylinders in the world. This next generation 2.7 liter EcoBoost builds on record-breaking dem customer demand for F-150 pickups equipped with V6 engines. In fact, 57% of new customers in 2014 for a F-150 have opted for either a 3.7 liter V6 or a 3.5 liter V6 EcoBoost to power their new F-150. Since 2010, retail registrations of light-duty pickup trucks with V6 engines have grown more than 600%. And the Ford F-150 is directly responsible for 91% of this growth. In addition to the all-new 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6 for here in Lima, the new F-150 will also feature a complete lineup of powertrains to let customers tailor the nation's best-selling truck to their needs. The 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine returns there's an all-new naturally aspirated 3.5-liter V6 debuting in this truck, and there's an improved 5-liter V8 still offered in the truck. Now, as you know from the great work you do here at the Lima Engine Plant, engines are at the core of the Ford Motor Company. And every single vehicle we produce, of course, has a motor. Having just built your 3 millionth Duratec V6, a huge milestone for this plant, everyone here should feel pride in knowing that your work helps quality engines be delivered that fuel our growth and satisfy our customers. Especially, as Mike mentioned, those who drive a Ford Edge, Explorer, Flex, Police Interceptor, Taurus, 
or the Lincoln vehicles every day and feel the power of what you build here. So it is very exciting to be adding the all new EcoBoost engine production to this outstanding work you already do. And we know we can count on all of you to launch this engine with great quality, on time, and at the volume we need to support our most important product in our company, this all new F-150. So thanks again to the plant management, the UAW leadership, and the great employees and team here in Lima for all you do for Ford Motor Company and our customers. I've been here several times before. I've known about this floor space for a long time. I'm so proud of the fact we could finally make this announcement, make it official, make it all happen this year. And we greatly appreciate all the work that you do here in Lima for us. We also want to thank our government partners who have been instrumental in helping us grow here. Important incentives from the state of Ohio, championed by Governor Kasich, have helped support Ford investment and job creation in the Buckeye State. And with that, I'd now like to introduce John Miner, President and Chief Investment Officer, Jobs Ohio. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Joe. You know, Joe, uh, when I was driving up here this morning uh, on the radio, they were actually referring to it as the University of Dayton. So uh, congratulations on that win. Uh, thanks for having us here. This is, uh, this is an exciting day. This is exciting for, for Lima. It's exciting for the Ford workers. And it's exciting for, for Ohio. And as Joe mentioned, uh, you know, Governor Kasich, he recognizes the importance of Ford in, in the state of Ohio. You know, this project, as Joe mentioned, you know, represents $500 million of capital investment. And this investment with the EcoBoost engine is just the latest in a series of, of projects and wins that, that we've had here in Ohio. Uh, when you combine this announcement with some of the other recent announcements in the last couple of years, Ford's investment here in Ohio is now up to a billion dollars just in the last couple of years. Now, this is exciting because this level of commitment by Ford really solidifies the long-term future of a plant here in Lima. You know, but in addition to this investment, we're also thrilled by the 300 new jobs that this project will create. And this is the kind of win that really keeps our momentum going uh, here in Ohio. Uh, over the last three years, uh, Ohio has added 236,000 new private sector jobs uh, in Ohio, this represents uh, number four, rank number five in the country in terms of job creation over this time frame, and we're also number one in the Midwest. And these 300 jobs will help continue that positive trend and that positive movement. Now, one of the reasons we've had success and, and a reason for these positive moves uh, is the relationships that we've developed, and certainly the relationship that we've developed here with Ford and with the Ford team. Uh, and this starts with our leaders. Uh, we mentioned Governor Kasich. Governor Kasich has a strong relationship with your CEO, has a strong relationship with your COO, and with Joe. And this is important because, uh, you know, I think a lot of times these great leaders stick together. Uh, I mentioned the leadership that Governor Kasich has, uh, has displayed in bringing Ohio back, particularly with the job numbers. But when you look at uh, your CEO, Alan Mulally, just last week, he was named by Barron's as one of the best CEOs in the world. And not only that, Joe was just named, I think, recently uh, by Fortune Magazine as the 2013 Business Person of the Year in the automotive sector. So congratulations on that. But you know, the, the relationships extend beyond, you know, the leadership. Uh, there's, a, there's a real team effort here. And Joe mentioned uh, Senator Faber, and I think I just saw him uh, there he is, uh, come in. And you know, Senator Faber, Representative Huffman have been great partners of ours. They've been great partners uh, in terms of us really building up the development function uh, in the state of Ohio. Uh, Matt Sabolski at Jobs Ohio, Gabby Bruno at Ford, they did all the heavy lifting with this. They did a great job in getting this to uh, finally get announced. We said it's been a long time coming. Uh, you know, we've had other key partners, Jeff Sprague, uh, Mayor Berger, uh, I'm sure I'm going to leave people out, but Jay Begg, uh, Ron Miller, uh, Kurt Slusher, and, and Jeff uh, Lurkey uh, have all been instrumental in, in getting, this, uh, getting this deal announced. 
We also have here Christy Tanner, who's our Managing Director at Jobs Ohio for the automotive sector. Uh, and then I think I saw some of our regional growth partnership uh, partners, which is our regional entity uh, here in the, this part of the state. The point of this is that we've had a lot of key players at the local, regional, and state levels that have played a big part in this, uh, in really bringing this here today. And that's one of the areas where I think we really differentiate Ohio, is we bring uh, all levels of whether it's government or development functions to the company, and, and that's where we're winning. So thanks again, Joe, Mike, thank you. Uh, the local leadership, the UAW, uh, the workers here. I mean, without this group, uh, this would not have been possible. So, Joe, I, uh, I'm looking forward to the next billion dollars of invest investment here in Ohio, and, and I know we're going to be working on that with you. So, thank you. Thank you, John, and also thank you, Joe. Um, at this time, I would like to now invite to the stage the president of Local 1219, Mr. Dave Rabe. Thank you, Mike. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, on behalf of the UAW, I'd like to thank all the people that came in today and uh, joined us for this historic day again for Lime Engine Plant. Um, I'm honored to be here today as we announce the next step towards the future of Lime Engine Plant. Uh, to build the all new 2.7 V6 EcoBoost, which will be powering the exciting all new 2015 Ford F-150. Um, we'd also uh, like to thank uh, UAW President Bob King, um, Vice President Jimmy Settles, National Ford Department, um, the 2011 negotiating team, and Ford Motor Company for trusting Lime Engine Plant and the members of UAW Local 1219 with such an important product, the PV6. Uh, Lime Engine Plant is a highly skilled, highly motivated workforce with a history of producing high quality, maintaining good safety records, and exceeding our customer demands. As the 3537 production increased, we were very fortunate, so did our membership. With the influx of new UAW members, Lima Engine Plant produced over 1,000,000 liter engines um, in the past two years. Uh, next, I'd like to recognize the Nano team. Um, I guess the, the real occasion for today. Um, super job. A lot of you have been out here for a couple years now. And uh, I remember what the dark side looked like. Who would ever thought we could turn out something like this? But um, you guys roles uh, it, it is meeting uh, the, the demanding schedules of new launches. Um, you just did it to perfection. So uh, great job, Nano team. Uh, we will continue to work closely with our leadership and Ford leadership, both at Lime Engine and nationally to explore additional opportunities for all of us moving forwards. There are great things ahead, and the future at Lime Engine plant is bright. Um, with that, I would like to recognize one of the hardest workers I've ever seen with the UAW, um, Director Ken Lortz. He is uh, the Regional 2B Director. Ken has over 400 UAW uh, locals that he is responsible for. So with that, Ken, um, I'd like to introduce you. It's my privilege. Thank you. Wow, this, this really is a great day today. And, uh, you know, 40, almost 40 million engines manufactured right here in Lyme, Ohio. That's something to be proud of. And now to land this gem uh, brings even more proud to the work that you all do. And I want to thank Dave and Scott and the entire uh, UAW leadership here in Lima for the great job you do because that played a huge role in, in the opportunity to have this engine here today. Uh, but most importantly, I want to thank the work that all of the rank and file UAW Local 1219 folks do uh, here every day because it's your attention to detail and your attention to quality and building high quality, the best quality engines uh, that could be manufactured. That's what makes things like this happen. And I want to thank Joe and, and Ford Motor Company for recognizing the tremendous asset that they have right here in this workforce and putting the confidence in this workforce 
to make an investment of $500 million. Joe, thank you very much. And, and I had the opportunity, as Joe mentioned, uh, we were together uh, earlier this month over in Avon and uh, for, a, for a major announcement there. Uh, again, proof that we're doing all the right things, proof that the auto industry is coming back. And, and Joe, we just got to keep meeting like this. This is, this is a great. Uh, but, but I also want to thank the legislators, because it wasn't that long ago the auto industry in the United States was, was uh, in trouble. And there's a number of legislators that stood up when we needed some help and helped save the auto industry, because it's certainly no secret what happens in the auto industry drives the economy of this country. And so I want to thank those legislators who were there with us. And, and another piece that I believe played a very significant role in the opportunity for the, for the uh, growth that we're seeing in our auto industry is collective bargaining. And in the middle of that collective bargaining process for Ford Motor Company was our Vice President, Jimmy Settles. Uh, Jimmy did a, does a great job, and it's my privilege an honor to serve with him on, on the International Executive Board. Uh, and, and with that, I would like to introduce our Vice President, Jimmy Settles, uh, for the great work he does and the influence and weight that he leaned into this process to get this engine brought here to Lima. Vice President Jimmy Settles. Thank you. Good morning. I tell you, it's um, a great day today. I'm, as Kim was saying that earlier this month, uh, we uh, told Joe we were at um, Avon Lake and said we got to make this a, a annual event. Then we thought about it again. We said we wanted to make a monthly event. Then we called him again and said we want to make this a weekly event. So uh, he has not made this a weekly event, but it's been twice this month in this great state of Ohio we're able to come here and with positive, positive news. So I'd just like to say thank you, uh, not only to these great workers here, but also to Ford Motor Company. But it also makes me remember just a few years ago, you know, how far we have came as a team, as a country, as a union, as a membership. And at that time, as all workers know that we did some things that were historic, and we had to do it to make certain of a survival of this company. But we also went into negotiations, and we said that we were going to do some things. And we were going to, when we came out of this dark ages, of these bad times that we had, that everybody would prosper. And I'm really, really proud to say that we are prospering. I'm really, really glad to say that, that they were not just idle words that the company gave, that we actually made this come to fruition. And I'd also like to just thank our workers for being so patient. And I know it's been a long time. We hear it all the time. It's been almost nine years since we had a raise. And we understand that. But we had to do some things. And it, fortunately, I think that it's times like this to make us to look in the rearview mirror. Because even though that we're here today and we got a great product, I remember if it had not been for Barack Obama, making the right decision at the right time, none of us would have been here, in particular here in Ohio. The auto industry would have been dead. I know that we give accolades to ourselves and this team as we should. But I want you to just remember that those that when we were in real times of need stood up for us. And I'd really just like to thank not only the government officials here, but the government officials in the United States for making that big decision. Let me take up my opportunity. I know we introduced a, 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 a lot of people that, uh, that were dignitaries here, but I got three of them on my staff. That, you know, it's times like this I get, you know, sometimes I get a little credit, and I want to introduce those that when things go wrong, they did it. <laughs> uh, they work for me. But uh, the international servicing rep for here is Jerry Lawson is here today uh, with you, services plant. Uh, I also have Jeff Faber. Who's, who does the sourcing work, and uh, we here see if we can fill up the rest of the space here. Um, <laughs> okay. So we can uh, get some rest of the space. Uh, seriously, I mean, he does an excellent job, and we've been doing an excellent job with the company uh, to, to uh, make certain that we get additional work. And then let me introduce the one that really does the heavy lifting, my right-hand man, uh, Frank Keeks.
What I really, really want to do is really just give all the homage and thanks uh, to this great, great workforce. I know that, as Joe Hendricks was just saying, is just this epitomizes the American worker. Uh, 37 years this F-150 has been built, has been the number one vehicle, and has always been built in America. And that is, pays a testament to the total team, not just us that build it, but the engineers, the everybody that it takes to put all this together. And I just want to thank, once again, for a motor company, because when we went to them, we said that we wanted to bring work back here to America. That if we understand that Ford Motor Company is a global company, but just like any other company, they have a home. And it was imperative that they take care of home. And we were able to convince them, and you heard, heard Joe say about all these launches, and the majority of them are here in the United States. The investment is tremendously large in the United States. And it really, not only the recovery of Ohio, if it had not been for the auto industry, the state of Michigan, Illinois, and Kentucky. So they have made great investments back here in the United States. And as we move to a negotiation in 2015, we know we're going to continue those investments. Right, Joe? <laughs> but seriously, let me just thank everyone, and more importantly than anybody, let me just thank God. Thank God for making all of this possible, for getting inside people's heads and minds and making right, make the right decision. So. And as I leave here, let me just thank you once again for all the wonderful work that the American workers, and particularly the workers here, have made to make this not only a great company, but make this a great state, but make this a great United States. So thank you very much for all you do. Thank you, Jimmy. There's, there's an old saying that's often overused, which says there's no I in team. And the time I've been here working with the great people in this plant, it's true. It's not a cliche. It happens every single day in this plant. And it's a privilege and honor, as I said earlier, to work with such a committed and hardworking team of people who can sacrifice on so many levels to get the job done and make what you see behind me possible. Hats off to all of the Lima engine workers for your dedication. This is only the beginning, right? This is the beginning of the next chapter of our storied history. And we've got a new engine, the 2.7 EcoBoost engine to add to our lineup. And soon we'll be celebrating our 41 millionth engine built in this plant. And Joe, we'll make you proud that you made the right decision putting this engine in this plant and announcing that here today. So thank you very much. And also, and I also want to again say thanks to Joe Henricks, John Miner, Dave Rabe, our partner in this business, along with Scott Hinkle, the chairman, uh, Ken Lortz, and Jimmy Settles, and all of our friends in the media, and all of our friends and partners in the legislative and the uh, in the legislative government organizations. There's too many to mention, but uh, but thank you very much. This is a great day, and thank you. And enjoy the rest of the day. I would also like to say thank you for the all the folks from the media and our friends from the media. So we are wrapping up. And I would like to invite all of our friends from the media down front for uh, some photo opportunities and um, any questions you might have. So thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>